All right, and welcome back to the Horror Writers Podcast, the show with two horror authors discussing all things in the world of horror. I'm your host, Zach Bohan, and with me, as always, is Jay Thorne. How you doing, Jay? What is up, man? How you doing? I'm doing great. Can't complain. Been staying really busy, so just, uh, yeah, really, really glad we're back in, back in the swing here in 2016, recording some new episodes, so it's, yeah, a, it's a lot you know, of fun. It, it's, I think it's worth saying, I think we mentioned this on the, on the year-end wrap-up show, but I think we had both sort of had an unofficial uh pilot run we we said we were going to record through the end of 2015 and then kind of see what the response was and see if people were digging it and uh it seems like they are so it's really fun to kind of be on the other side now on in 2016 and recording new stuff and feeling pretty good about it right on that yeah i'm I'm totally with you this is this is a lot of fun and we're glad that you know we got people, you know, everyone who's stuck around with us and stuff. We we really appreciate it. So, so before we get in the topic today, I'm gonna throw a little curveball at you. Um, and uh, bring it. I just, yeah, I just kind of want to ask you: uh, is, is there anything cool that you've, uh, you know, maybe read lately, or that you've, you've any movies you've watched or anything, anything cool like that? It's okay to say no. Um. <laughs> yeah. I, I. Yeah. I mean, I. Well, we've kind of mentioned this and. <laughs> Our Irish friend in uh, in Ohio yeah. is getting a lot of airtime on the show, but uh, timing might suck with that question. But <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I just recently finished uh, Sour Candy, the new title by Keelan, which uh, was really phenomenal, and and it was really excellent, and uh, and and that was well worth it. And uh, the other thing that uh, pretty recently, uh, I finally got through the third and final season of Hemlock Grove. Um, so. That was fun. I, I don't know how I felt about it. I mean, I, I, I think it, I think I sort of knew it was going to head that way and I won't spoil. Uh, it was, it's, it's totally worth it. I just, uh, I'm not really sure what I expected, but it was totally worth it. Um, great, great stuff. And, uh, and, and related to that, um, I just saw news that, um, Deadwood has been, um, yeah. optioned for, uh, a film. Uh, and th- yeah. this was one of my, and I think this was on before you and I knew each other. And I've, um, I love that show. Uh, that was an HBO show and, and people were pretty upset when it, when it was canceled. And, uh, so bringing back the cast for a movie, oh, I can't wait for that. Yeah. My, uh, my parents and my sister are way into that show and I finally gave it a watch and, and Catherine and I loved it. So, um, and and that actually that actually kind of blends into something I was gonna say something kind of cool that I've seen recently was a uh, last night I watched Bone Tomahawk. I don't know if Ooh. you've seen anything about that. It's a uh, yeah. <clears throat> it it is kind of a under the radar horror movie that came out last year, and they just added it to Amazon Prime Video. Um, but it's a it's a Western horror movie with a fantastic cast. Um, Kurt Russell stars in it. Um, with um, Patrick Wilson from The Conjuring and Watchmen. Oh yeah, uh, and it's it's also got some some fun little cameos in it. Like the movie starts off, it's got Sid Haig and David Arquette in it. Hmm. Um, but uh, but Kurt Russell and Patrick Wilson like own this movie. Um, but it's basically a Western horror film about these cannibal savages that invade that come to this town of like two hundred people called Bright Hope and kidnap these people, and then Kurt Russell and 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 Patrick Wilson and two other guys like basically have to travel like five days to go find this crazy ass Indian tribe of people. It's it was really good. Um, it was <clears throat> the story's pretty flatline, like it's pretty where it's going. Um, but there's the acting is awesome. Um, there's some pretty gory visuals. Um, and uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was really good. So if anyone has Amazon prime, you can watch bone Tomahawk for free on there right now. And it's, it's, it's worth it. It's, it's fun. So nice, nice. I'll throw one more little thing in here before we get to the topic for the yeah. day. This is totally, this is totally off the radar and people listening to this podcast will, will not maybe not even relate to this, but um, my kids are a little bit older now. And so um, we're using Netflix and we're watching some, some what, well for, for them will be classic TV and we are in episode four of The Office, the American, the American version. And, and from a writer standpoint, from a storytelling standpoint, I am blown away by, um, by the writing. I mean, seeing it again and, and how clever and efficient they are with the writing, it is phenomenal. So not anything horror related, but um, just something I've been watching now and just blown away by. It's funny you brought that up because I've been re-watching the first four seasons lately because that's, like my, that's my favorite comedy show ever. 
So that's what um, she said. <laughs> uh, dude, I could do a whole show about the office. So, um, and that's so funny. That, that's great. I love that show. So, <clears throat> so moving on. Uh, so today's topic, um, we are talking about something that Jay and I, if you've watched the podcast, I'm sure you could figure it out. Like we love music. So, and we love horror. So we're going to talk about kind of the, the blend of music and the horror genre specifically with uh, heavy metal music. Um, and uh, I think this will be a lot of fun because, <clears throat> um, you know, I think that uh, because Jay and I are about two years apart that uh, we'll kind of have a different <laughs> well, Who's older, me or you, you're two years ahead of me, right? Something. I don't know, but that we'll have a, uh, that we'll have a slightly, uh, we, we, we may, it may vary a little bit. Like we'll have different uh, viewpoints, on, yeah. on, I think in a way. And because uh, I know there's some specific metal stuff that I'm into that I don't think he is. Um, so anyway, so we're going to kind of talk about just kind of the, the blend of horror and heavy metal. What, why that's the case, like why they go together, some good examples. Um, and, and, and yeah, so, uh, so I think a good place to start and, I think you're the perfect guy to explain this is uh, why, why those two things? Like why do horror and heavy metal blend together so well? <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't necessarily know why um, I can, I can take some guesses. I think in, in their respective are the, in their respective mediums, both horror and heavy metal are really visceral. Uh, they're uh, you can feel it. You know, if you if you read a good horror story, if you watch a horror movie, you feel it. Uh, and I think the same is true of heavy metal. Um, it, that's a music form that's meant to be loud. Uh, it's meant to be driving, sometimes fast, sometimes mid-tempo. Uh, but if you go to a live heavy metal show, you don't just hear it, you feel it. And, uh, and so I think there's, I think there's that, that element. And then there's another layer to it, which is the the uh, the. Th- thematic thematic consistency between those two has to do with dark stuff uh you know it heavy metal and horror both deal with uh with fears heavy topics um things that are and and i i need to make this distinction because a lot of times people think and this happened in the 80s right oh kids listen to heavy metal music and that music is violent so they go kill people and, and, and that's not, and that's not how it works. You know, same with movies. Oh, you watch a violent movie. You're going to go shoot someone. It, it, it's not how it works. I think for a lot of people, uh, like, especially people like us, it's more therapeutic than anything. Uh, I, I know as a teenager, uh, when I was, you know, feeling misaligned and, and, uh, ostracized and feeling like an outcast, it was heavy metal music that made me feel like I had I had a connection to other people and in, in not the, necessarily the people who were right around me. So that's a bit of a long winded answer. I, I, I guess, again, I don't necessarily know what the direct connection is, but I know for me, it's on a, it's on sort of a subconscious level and that I, I just feel how those two align, but I, I can't really articulate it all that well. What about you? Um, you know, it's kind of the same way. Um, it's kind of funny. I'm trying to look up something regarding what you just said. Um, Cause there was a really funny review for bone Tomahawk. I saw last night. Um, I, I won't worry about it. It basically was saying uh, anyone who sees this movie needs to be condemned oh, or something right. like that. Right. Um, because it was because yeah. of the violence, kind of what you were saying, like people yeah. who people who write or people who watch horror movies and listen to heavy metal, we don't, you know, they're like usually some of the most cool, like laid back people ever <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> is, is, is what is what's really funny. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, honestly, I think you nailed it. Um, I think that it has a lot to do with, you know, just the, <clears throat> the, a lot of the visuals and stuff, you know, I mean, you can go back and we'll talk about this in a minute, but you can go back to some of the theatrics of some of the late, you know, mid to late seventies rock groups and stuff that really started to bring this to the forefront. Um, and, um, like and I think that, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what's funny about that is that, uh, I was, well, I'll get to that in a second, actually, because I have a question that has to kind of do with that. So, um, uh, but yeah, so I, I, the, the, it just makes sense. Like you said, like heavy metal is loud, you know, horror has this loud aspect to it as far as visuals and stuff. And, 
um, <clears throat> it just it just makes sense, and they just they blend they blend together really well. So, yeah. um, so so you so you showed your Led Zeppelin t shirt. So <laughs> there's obviously a lot of early um, groups that uh, that kind of are get credit for this, mm-hmm. um, and and with Led Zeppelin, it's not necessarily visual. Um, because it's more about things that were going on around them, you know, all the black magic and stuff, um, you know, and then of course you had black Sabbath and then a little bit later in that, like Alice Cooper, um, of mm-hmm. course really brought it out and started like showing it, making it more of an act. Right. Um, but so, I mean, for you, would you kind of take it like Led Zeppelin would kind of be the real start of that or. Yeah, I mean, it's a bit of a Sophie's choice between Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath. Um, you know, that's, I think those two bands in particular, in slightly different ways, uh, really, I think, cemented that, that connection. Uh, I mean, you look at both of them are, are post 60s, post psychedelic era bands where they, and, and they were some of the first that were, that were playing rock music that wasn't flower power. It wasn't, it wasn't hippie stuff. It was more the reality of the early '70s and some of the the issues that were facing us at that time, and and that struggle and those issues and the and that dark sort of energy is reflected in there. And you could take a look at you know War Pigs is a is a is a very uh, visceral and real uh, anti-war anthem. Um, it, the lyrically, it it's right in your face, and it sonically, it sounds like warfare. And then you look at uh, at Led Zeppelin, which had much more of sort of a Lovecraftian type of feel. You know, they were um, they were using Tolkien as as an influence, and they were uh, Jimmy Page is notorious. You know, the black arts that he was dabbling in, whatever. Um, so I think those two bands in particular, uh, for me, were would be the beginnings of it. And as you mentioned, you know, later on you get you know Alice Cooper, uh, and then a little bit later you get uh, you know Kiss. Um, and, and then you get, you know, Marilyn Manson and Rob Zombie and, and Iron Maiden and like, you know, there's this, there's so many that we could talk about. Um, but there's so many heavy metal bands that make the connection to either horror or dark fantasy. Yeah. And I think the <clears throat> bringing up Led Zeppelin for the fantasy element too is very, uh, is, is, is very true. Um, you know, if you watch, uh, what's the movie, the song remains the same, mm-hmm. right? Right. Obviously that's a big, like psychedelic thing going on but there's a lot of you know tolkien like fantastical elements which really um inspired a whole other genre of metal you know uh, that i was into for a very long time more of like the the prog power metal stuff um bands like uh as early as like uriah heap and then going all the way to like you know blind guardian um and and a lot of a lot of those type of bands um, and, and really bringing in like that whole fantastical element. Um, So yeah, Led Zeppelin definitely is, is, is rooted in, in, in a lot of that stuff. Um, And then I'll say, you know, as you know, Alice Cooper and kiss were kind of the first bands to really do like the shock rock thing. Um, And and yeah, the the, bring the theatrics out and uh, you know, and then, and then later on you mentioned Manson, you mentioned zombie, like stuff that pretty much everyone um uh knows about but then there were a lot of bands you know kind of um in the early 90s early to mid 90s you know there was a huge like that was like the peak of the death metal era mm-hmm. um which is really uh which is really rooted in in horror as well i mean if you go read as as ridiculous as it is you know but um if you want to get really extreme you know go read some of like cannibal corpse lyrics and stuff yeah. and uh it's like straight up poor. Um, and, and, you know, um, you know, there are a lot of bands from that era, obituary, malevolent creation, carcass, like all these bands, uh, you know, carcass, like their all their stuff was pretty much like these medical poor stories going on and stuff. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, you know, we'd be very remiss if we didn't at least mention Guar too, sure. um, which, you know, obviously Guar is very satirical. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, but yeah, another an, an, another great example. So it kind of you know it it really, um, it hits a it's it's a it's a wide spectrum. Um, and another thing that was going on in the early nineties, um, and this is like true horror stuff, was the Norwegian black metal scene. Right, um, got way out of hand. Like there's a there's a great book you can read called Lords of Chaos. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and uh, if anyone's just interested, uh, Lords, it, it, even if you're just interested in like true crime or music history in general, um, Lords of Chaos is a great book that talks about all the stuff going on in the early 90s where um, these guys and bands were like killing each other and stuff. And they were, um, there were a lot of suicides. And um, the, the most notorious was a guy named Varg Vernicus from a band called Burzum um, uh, stabbing a dude like 18 times and killing him. And there were stories about guys getting their body parts eaten, like all this crazy shit going on. Um, and, and really brought that whole black metal stuff to the, to the surface. But, uh, yeah. And even, even at the same time in the mainstream, uh, I mean, it, the early nineties was a time when Metallica was becoming, uh, a household name, more yeah. mainstream for better or worse, whatever you think of Bob rock, but the black album, uh, the breakout hit on that was Enter Sandman, and that video is like a short horror film. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, like, even even at all levels. So, if you had the, the really sort of obscure or more niche black metal stuff, and all the way up to stuff that was being played on classic rock radio like Metallica, um, there there is that connection still remains. Yeah, absolutely. And then you know, um, more recently, you can look at um, you know look at what Rob Zombie's done. You know, yeah, Rob Zombie Phil Anselmo is, is doing yeah. stuff and Kirk Hammett is doing stuff in the horror realm. I mean, <clears throat> yeah, it, it, it seems to be a, a pretty it's a it's a it's a very um, accessible parallel track, I think, for a lot of heavy metal artists to kind of step into that side stream of horror. And whether that be movie making or graphic novels or um, or festivals, you know, whatever it happens to be, it seems to be a, a, it seems to align pretty well for those guys. Yeah, you're right. Um you know, obviously Rob Zombie gets a lot of the credit, but you, you're right. I mean, there's a lot of other guys. I mean, if you ever want to get the shit scared out of you, um, go to the house of shock in new Orleans, mm. which is the, which is the haunted house that Phil Anselmo like is like owns as a part of during Halloween. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and yeah, so yeah, there, and I think he's doing, he does like a festival too, right? Like a horror yeah. movie and, and music yeah, he festival. Yeah, one in um, November, I think late November, early December, um, house with uh, house core records, which is his label. Um, yeah. it's in conjunction with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For anyone who's <clears throat> not quite as in the know, Phil and Selma was, uh, the lead singer of Pantera and, uh, is more recently the singer of down, um, super joint and does his own solo stuff as well, but he's mo mostly known for Pantera. Um, yes. And he's a he's a huge horror movie fan. So, mm -hmm. what were you gonna say? Oh, you just said yes. Okay. Yeah, I was just agreeing with you. I thought, sorry, I thought you were about to start a sentence, but uh, but yeah, and then and then um, you know, kind of like I said, you know, Rob Zombie, like White Zombie, um, you know, really did a had a lot of theatrics and stuff, and then Rob went solo, and and he's made a whole second career. Yes. Um, I'm doing movies, and you know, some people love his movies, some people hate him. I'm I think they're hit or miss. I mean, I I love Devil's Rejects. Um, I think House of a Thousand Corpses is, 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 I don't like it as much as Devil's Rejects, but I do enjoy it. I know a lot of people didn't like Lords of Salem. Um, yeah. and he's got a new movie coming out. Um, it just got called, a rated R rating too. He was, they were yeah. going back and forth on that. So yeah, they, good they were, yeah, that is cause they were, it was going to be NC 17 and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it was, it was going back and forth. And then, um, you know, the other thing with him is, is, is whether you like it or not, I mean, like, like them or not, but you know, the dude got to remake Halloween, which is mm -hmm. to put, to get that franchise put in your hands. I mean, it's, it's a burden obviously. And, and yeah. it showed because a lot of people hated those movies. Um, but, uh, but still like the dude got to remake Halloween. So, um, that, that right there just kind of shows you what kind of success he has in the genre. And his, like I said, he's been able to make a whole second career, um, and, and a whole other medium, which is, that's pretty cool. Yeah. You know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so yeah, that's, I mean, that's pretty much it as far as what I've got. I think, uh, we're kind of run up against the clock a little bit. Um, do you have anything else you want to add or anything on this or? Yeah, I'll, I'll kind of give a shout out to myself, which is kind of odd, but, uh, <laughs> I, I have, uh, I have another podcast slash video channel called dark arts theater and uh, the subtitle is the Horror and Heavy Metal Podcast. Uh, so if you are interested in this intersection of, of art forms, that podcast is sort of a passion project of mine. It, it takes a lot of time without a lot of return, <laughs> but that's okay because I love doing it. But it's, it's all about horror and heavy metal and, and, and the, the connection between the two. And uh, I've got a new season in the pipeline and, and should be up probably within three to four weeks. So oh, nice. uh, I didn't know you were Yeah. So that's, that's cool. coming. Mm-hmm. 
yeah, everyone should definitely go check that out. Uh, I've, I've, I've definitely enjoyed it. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, you know, whether you are just a horror fan or just a heavy metal fan, like you're going to find stuff in there that you like, there's a lot so. of really, there's a lot of really good music and there's some cool visuals and some great interviews. Um, even non horror interviews, like, uh, you know, for, I know we have a lot of writers who listen to our show and, uh, all of you should go watch his interview with Andy Weir. Um, so, uh, yeah. So yeah, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, and I think I'm going to, uh, I think I'm going to open it. This is a little bit of a reveal exclusive reveal, but uh, I think pretty sure the first episode is going to feature an interview I did with John, Don Jameson, who is one of the co-hosts of that metal show. Um, oh, so nice. if, you're, if you're a metal fan and, and you like that, you know, he's on there with Eddie trunk and, um, um, help me out. Oh, Jim Florentine. Uh, if you if you like what those guys are doing, talking metal, it's more like old school metal, but it's still metal. And uh, and Don's a great guy, so I think that's probably going to be the first episode. How the hell did you not mention Dawkin and Nightmare on Elm Street in this episode? I have no idea. Oh how you bring that up. man! Well, now you just you you saved us because we would have been crucified in the comments. We would have gotten hundreds of comments of how how we left that out. So you saved us. Yeah, that large Dawkin contingent that's listening right. to our show would be really pissed. <laughs> so. Yeah. So on that note, um, <laughs> on that note, we'll sign out and, uh, and yeah, so we will be back next week with an all new episode. All there right. We go. See you later. Later. Bye.